that one and that one are for your heating circuit from your engine. There we go, clear as mud. This is a chlorifier. It uses the engine's coolant to make hot water or it makes hot water via an electric element which is thermostatically controlled inside the boiler. And this is how it works. Coolant from your engine circulates through a coil inside the chlorifier. This heats the cold fresh water or the electric element which is thermostatically controlled heats the water. Cold water enters the chlorifier cylinder here and exits as hot water here. There is a thermostatic setting on the valve or bypass which allows hot water to be regulated where it comes out the tap or faucet. You can pause the video here to see the full diagram. Out of the way noodles! Out of the way! Well that was quick! That's a good service. So it's Thursday night and today's Tuesday morning. A new one of them. Here we go. Here we go. Let's hope it's the right one. Dun dun dun. dun, Exactly as it was in the photograph. Perfect. That is. That's. One time so I can see, and that's both those bottom two outlets are straight. One, we've got one straight and one elbow yeah. but that ah right that elbow comes out that's that elbow is a press fitting yes so actually they are identical yeah so you just take that elbow out and put that elbow on and there clean it up yeah and that's it yeah and this time we'll set the thermostat a bit lower so yes. you don't burn yourself yes but well, that's perfect isn't it It even looks like the straps are in the same place. Yeah, I might be able to use my old straps. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, all we need to do now is put it in. Fittings, I mean oh, those... the bloody catch is broken. Look at that. The, uh, that's broken off there. Oh, it's, it's been walloped, isn't it, in delivery? Yeah. Well, what we do is we take that one off of there. That one's broken as well though, isn't it? That's why I am... Um... No, this one's okay. So you just need to have the tested stickers. That one's okay. Now that's a bit of a shit, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to uh, photograph that and send it to you. We just cut through the live neutral on earth to the thermostat and heater. There. We'll take this uh, heater stat out later. And we swapped over the broken one. 
for the new one, rewired it, put the test labels over. But the reason that it's gone is because if you lift these tubes up, or lift the cylinder up by the tubes, you can see there's a gap between the insulation and the tubes and what's holding this cylinder up inside this insulation at the moment is one M4 bolt there and two there so if this gets hit on the end it pushes that down which forces these two welded and this welded stud down and breaks off the plastic here actually a better way to transport it rather than that way up as shown there is to keep it on its side because then the pressure will be on the side and not on the ends so there you go SBV I've just sorted out one of your delivery issues and you can see that's that's where that's been pulled up So not a catastrophe but you know hey hope another 20 minutes we'll have it in well actually before we put it in let's just show you so these two here this one and this one they go to your engine so that's the uh, coolant that circulates around your engine via your water pump it goes through here through a coil and then out here your cold water goes in here and then there's a bypass relief valve here where you can turn the temperature up and down which is that one there and your hot water comes out here so while we've got this hot water cylinder or chlorifier or boiler as they're sometimes called out I thought I'd show you what they look like without the insulation on take particular note of these welds here and that's a stainless weld and that's a machine weld quite easy to tell the reason it was leaking if I turn this round it's now up the wrong way can you see that the water's come out of the weld there that repair has been done with a MIG welder which has stainless wire in it and the reason we can tell that is that a MIG welder uses an electric arc in a CO2 gas and you get lots of splatter like this now a TIG welder creates an arc with an inert gas in and you then use a filler rod and that's what that should look like so this is a TIG weld and this is a MIG weld and the TIG weld is much much cooler and the MIG weld has actually distorted all the end of the cylinder as well and it's not been polished up and so the repair weld has failed and it's failed within three years so this is the heater and thermostat in one so there's a an electric heater element in here and a thermostat and a thermostat is just a switch that works on temperature and you set the temperature you want it to heat to on this little red dial here the current flows through the brown and the blue so this is your live or hot wire and this is the neutral or ground and this is the earth and these two this one here and this one here are the hot water heating coil which comes from the coolant in your engine so it goes around the engine via a pump through here nice and hot goes around a coil inside the drum and then out of this one here and it heats the water that's in this drum so these two here and this one is your cold water input so your cold water comes into the tank here and you'll note that it's teed off here and goes across to this valve I'll come to that in a second and this is your pressure setting valve so this is 
where the pressure becomes too great it blows out through here and you can set that to go off and these ones I think are up to four bar four bar limit um, one bar is 14.7 pounds so it's about 60 psi that that'll actually go up to and this valve which comes across from the cold water input you know actually attaches to the hot water yeah you can see the hot water label still on there and the reason for that is that this valve if I turn it over you can mix the hot out of here and this cold to give you the temperature which you want so that controls the temperature of the mixing of the cold water from here through this valve and then the hot water that comes out of this junction here actually then you can set the temperature so that's how it works let's flick across to that uh, drawing so you can see the schematic again Oh, that all went in okay, didn't it? Seems it, it just it slid in exactly the same. Well, I mean, I've put it where the bands are. I haven't moved it yet because I need an extra pair of hands. I think we'll probably attach the, the lines before we actually finally do up the straps. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because then you can... Re I mean, those straps are roughly in the same position. Yeah, well, we measured it off the other one. It was yeah. the same, wasn't it? So it's just a matter of connecting pipes now, then? Yeah. Theoretically. And don't forget that your pressure header tank is released before you turn your pump on. Otherwise you'll have water everywhere. Remember I undid the yep. pressure yep. to take the pressure out? Alright. Well I'm um, hopefully you're gonna be here when we do that. <laughs> well we can do it now, can't we? Yeah, but you've got your clean clothes on. No I haven't. <laughs> they're clean. Uh they're cleaner. Cleaner. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you could uh, yeah, it's tight. Okay, so this is our hot water out. This is our power cable, which you must not plug in until the boiler is chlorophyll is full of water. So that's off to one side. Our cold wheat water feed comes in there, and then our bypass valve. So all that's left to do is to tighten up these two M8 bolts one there and one there and of course M8 will be an M13 spanner or wrench we'll probably do those with a socket and these are our connections to the coolant one there and one over the back there all on nicely done so David's just going to tighten these up now If you can get your if you can get your fingers in there, David. Uh, yeah, and we can try. We can certainly try. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. No, I thought it was a thirteen. It is a thirteen. Isn't it? it is a thirteen. Yeah. yeah. M eight thirteen. M ten seventeen. M1219 Pressure vessel back in and tightened So when you turn the water on the pump will come from one of your two tanks yep. Into the pump It will go past that pressure vessel and the pressure will build up inside there so that when the pump clicks off this gives the, the water pressure a helping hand when you first open a tap or a a valve so what tank are we going to go on either uh, one yeah the one in your hand is the rear tank okay no. there we go lefty loosey yeah. right water on and let's check for leaks not that we're going to have any though it's going to go no it's going to go fine do you want me to uh, 
open the tap. Um, you've oh, got. I mean, I've got to put the um, uh, control panel switch on first. Yeah. Control panel. Yeah. Control panel switch. The, the uh, sink tap is open. Shall I close it? No. Leave it open so that it gets water through the system. No leaks. Okay. Shut the tap off and let's let the pressure build. So no pressure at the moment, so it's only a tiny dribble. So if you if you turned your tap off, yeah. so the pressure's building up now. Yeah. So if you now shut your hot water tap off, and your pump's cut out, which pressure. means you're up to pressure. Yeah. And Still no leaks. No leaks. No. Still no leaks around any of the joints. Nothing. Absolutely perfect. Good job. So what was that? Twenty-five minutes. Twenty-five minutes. Yeah. And as you say, it looks complicated, doesn't it? It Until looks very, very complicated. You frightened me to death. But uh, once you explain, then yeah. I can I can see it. Like I said, if you know how it works, yeah. you know how to fix it. Yeah, brilliant. Right. Excellent. No problems. We can plug your... Well, actually, I think what we'll do is we'll run a bit more hot water through, take any air bubbles any out. final air bubbles out of there. Before yeah. we plug the... Well, I'll check all three taps as well. Yeah. Hi, folks. Hi. It's only us again. Well, we thought we'd give you a bit of an update at the end of this video. Uh, today's date is the 22nd of April. We're still in Gaeta in Italy. Um, we've been here since uh, October and we've been uh, quarantined or in lockdown since the 9th of March. Now the latest information that we've got um, from the marina is that we may be able to leave on the 5th of May or possibly the 15th of May. Or possibly extended to the end of May. <laughs> we but don't know yet. We don't know yet. In the meantime we are doing what darling? Uh, maintenance, cleaning, <laughs> a bit more cleaning. <laughs> Lots of maintenance. So rather than being able to show you the videos of, of the sailing and the, and the um, and our travels, unfortunately we can't, but we'll keep you up to date on our Facebook page and, and via YouTube and we'll try and show you as much of what's going on here as we can. Hopefully we can get back to some sailing videos pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, we'll just... Uh, keep doing what we're doing and hope you're enjoying it and uh, learning something from it and remember if you know how it works you can always fix it don't forget subscribe down here yeah hit the bell icon and you'll get uh, an update of our latest videos it's really easy to do and we have noticed that about 50% of you aren't subscribed so please subscribe it really helps us out and um, helps promote our videos until then, stay it's safe. Say, stay safe and, and sail <laughs> safe. Look after yourself, guys and girls, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>